Hello YouTube family, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jerry and I'm living the Newcomb life. Have you ever gone to one of those big box stores, either Costco, Sam's, or BJ's, and purchased a large amount of meat and you're not quite sure what to do with it because it's so much and it seems like it's so overwhelming? Well, I'm gonna show you what we do when we buy in bulk. Yesterday, Dawn and I went to Costco and we bought some salmon and some steelhead trout that I'm going to basically cut up into steaks and then freeze in a food saver and anything that we have left over, I'm going to cook and we're going to do a taste test. Dawn and I have never had steelhead trout before, so this will be something new. So stand by and let's see how it goes. As you can see, you got your fillet here, and it's relatively big. It can be overwhelming, I completely understand, but this is going to make it really simple. We're basically just going to cut this up into a number of steaks, and that'll help us preserve it and then eat it whenever we feel like. So let's get started. So basically what I do is I try to envision the largest number of steaks that I can pull from this. I usually try to trim this portion off first. And I do it with in the respect of I'm trying to leave as much meat in the steaks as I can. Just remove that. And then from here, I just start breaking it up into steaks. And you probably want them about two and a half to three inches wide. Okay, so that actually worked out really good. So we have two, four, six, eight steaks. So this will make four meals for Dawn and I. Okay, now let's look at the steelhead. Again, it looks like we have another real big fillet here. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to envision it, cutting it up into personalized steaks. And anything that's left over, we're going to grill up. Okay, now that I have it all squared up, I'm just going to cut it up into individual one-person portions. Okay, so here you can see I have two, four, six, eight steelhead trout steaks all ready to be preserved in the food saver. So I'm going to show you guys how I cut my bags and I get them ready. Um, you don't have to, but I like to double seal just in case if one of the seals fail. Uh, it's just kind of a backup plan. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I 
make my bags for my food saver. As you can see right here, I have the Food Saver FM 5200 series. And this is the vacuum chamber. In order to make it seal, you just push here. This is the seal and, and cut bag here. In order to cut it, you use this right here. And in order to seal, you use this sealing lock right here. So what I do is, when I'm making my initial bags, I take my bag and I pull it through the bottom there. And what I do is I get it as level as I can. And then I push down the sealing lock right here. And you'll see it's sealing right there. You can tell by that red light. And then I use the, the cutter. And I cut the excess off right there. The light is out, so now you know it's sealed. So in order to get a double seal on the bottom, I lift this sealing lock and I pull the end of the bag that you can see right here just to this white line right there. As soon as it gets to that white line, I push the sealing lock and you can see it's sealing. As soon as that light goes out, you know it's done. There you go, it's sealed. And then I lift the sealing lock and I pull the bag out and you can see it's now got a double seal there on the bottom of your bag. So what I do then is I take my scissors and I trim up the excess here. Just like that. And then I pull my bag to the, the desired length that I want. And then I repeat the process. I push the sealing lock down. You can see it's sealing right there. I cut my bag to the desired length that I want. As soon as the light goes out, you know it's sealed. There you go. Lift the sealing lock. Pull the bag to that white line right there. Push the sealing lock back down. As soon as it's done sealing, you pull the bag out. You can see it's done. Lift the sealing lock. Pull the bag out. Trim the excess off. And repeat the process. So that's how I make my bags, guys. All right, I'm going to grab my bag. and put the salmon in my food saver bag. And then you take your bag and you put it up into the vacuum area and you press and the machine will do the rest. You can see it's vacuuming right now. As soon as it's done vacuuming, it'll seal. So you can tell by the red light, it's sealing now. And then what I do is, just to put the double seal on, I take my bag and I put it up in there as far as it'll go. And then I drop this lever to do the second seal. And you can see by this light, it's making that second seal. And as soon as it's done, you lift the lever and you now have a double seal. I'm just going to dress it up by cutting the edge off right here. And then the last thing that you have to do is label your product.
And that's it guys. Now you just throw it in the freezer and you use it whenever you want to. Okay, now that I got everything packaged up, the only thing that's left to do is get it in the freezer. Alright guys, so thanks for watching this video. This is part one of a part two series. If you want to see what we did with the salmon and the steelhead trout that we did not freeze, you can check out part two. But thanks for coming by. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps our channel grow. One of the ways that you can really help us grow our channel is to share our videos on all of your social media platforms. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're up to date on all of our upcoming videos. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.